Hey everyone, my name is Hayden and welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be adding a weather utility to our CLI program, giving us the ability to request the current and forecasted weather for any location in the world. So today we're building our first utility into EVE. It's going to be a weather API that has two endpoints. Current, which displays the current weather for today, and forecast, which displays the forecast for that week. Just before we start, excuse the haircut, but this is the coding part of the video. So if you've not watched part one of this video, this part will not make sense. So there'll be a link in the description. Go back and watch part one. Where part one ends is where this video begins. Let's jump into the code now, I hope you enjoy. Cool, so now that you know how to pass contexts through to each command, we can use that context to call our service um, object and request information. So we can say result is equal to um, context.object.weather. Uh, and then on the weather object, I'm gonna make a uh, method called current which will take a location which is just context object dot location similarly down in similarly similarly in forecast uh, we'll just have another one called forecast which will also take a location and this will return information back to us so let's now jump over to the service weather file and we can start fleshing this out with the correct information that we need so inside the weather service, this is where we'll basically interact with all of the um, open weather API. So what I'm doing here is splitting commands as being the kind of the front end interface into the Eve project or Eve CLI and weather or services is all the Python logic code. So it's kind of a, a splitting out. So I'm going to make a manager here, which, um, oh yeah. So in order to interact with it, we need um, from Hi, OWM, import OWM, and I have not added that to requirements.txt, and we can add pi OWM, uh, and the latest version for me is 3.0.0. Cool, and then when we jump back to this, it'll say um, requirement not satisfied, it will install it down here, and then once it's finished installing, we will have access to it. Cool, so that package has successfully installed now, so I can now use um, OWM, um, and this takes an API key, um, so we can pass that in. I would not recommend that you do this. I'd have a better way of handling it, but for the sake of this um, example, um, you could do something like this and put your API key here. Um, actually, that's, this leads me on to a quite a good point. Um, yeah, so you should really have a secrets manager if you're building a project like this, but for simplicity, I'm just gonna make a new Python file in the root directory called config. Um, and this is just kind of going to call, um, give us a place to store information like this. Um, oh, so you probably can't see that. Let me zoom in. Yeah, so we're going to need a couple kind of like configs to run this. So I'm going to say weather API key. And this here is where you are going to put um, your API key. And um, there's going to be a couple more kind of like default stuff that we can set here such as your location, um, your metrics for uh, temperature, and your metrics for wind. Um, for me, I'm miles um, per hour. My temperature is Celsius. My default location is going to be London and uh, when I cut away from the camera, I'll, put, I'll replace that with my actual API key so we can use it. And that's what you can do here. So this file will just store kind of all in, in, like information like this. Wouldn't recommend doing this in actual production, kind of real life, but for the sake of this tutorial, it doesn't really matter. Okay, cool. So now I've added that um, config script, we can say from eve dot uh, config import weather API, weather location, weather metric temp, and weather metric wind. I've also got a typo up here. This should be pi o, o open weather m. Cool. So rather than putting your API key here now, you can just put it in that file and replace that like that. A couple more things I want here. We want a default uh, weather location. So I'm just going to put default location equals um, weather location um, and metric temp is. Um, you can either override it or we can get it from the config. Uh, and this one's wind, and this is wind, and this is wind. 
cool and we can just add these up here so we can say um, so basically we've got kind of kind of full customization of what's going on here we can pass them into the weather object or uh, we'll get it from the config cool and then down here like I said we're going to want one method that is um, current and one that is forecast Cool, so for the current method, um, we can actually pass in a location here, um, but in order, rather than me sitting here explaining kind of what the API does, um, I'll write out what we basically need to say. So um, we can say op the weather observation is equal to self.manager.weather. Sorry, that needs to be dot weather manager up there. And then here we can say weather uh, at, I think location is it? Weather at place, there we go. And then we just pass in the location we passed it in or the default location on the object. Um, and then from there we can say weather equals observation dot weather. Um, and then I'll say the result is going to be, we're going to create another method on this class called weather get weather data, uh, which will just take our um, weather object and extract out kind of important information from it. Um, and I'm also going to add a parameter, uh, sorry, a key to the dict that we're going to return there. Um, that is location, which is just observation dot location dot name little space and observation dot location dot country and then we can return the results uh, back to the CLI and that will handle all that and very similar for forecast we can say for forecaster is equal to self dot manager dot forecast at place location or uh, self dot default location. Why is that? Oh yeah. So we can either overwrite it, or we can use the default location. Uh, again, location is equal to forecaster dot forecast dot location dot name a little space and forecaster dot forecast dot location dot country. Uh, cool, and then we want to, because obviously this is a forecast, we're going to return multiple items here. Um, so basically for each, uh, so that we're going to do a dictionary comprehension, so for each weather object in forecaster.forecast.weather, weathers, uh, what do we want to do with them? Um, we just basically want to create a big dictionary of data for this weather object um, and merge that with um, merge that with the location so we add location onto that information as well um, and that will basically just loop through all of them there we go so it's going to loop through each weather in the um, weather's uh, object that we return from that um, and it's going to merge two dictionaries together which is um, getting data out of the weather information object and adding location onto that dictionary as well. So we're gonna get a list of dicks at the end of this. Why is this complaining? Don't need that. Uh, and probably need to implement that. So let's go and implement this. So this is gonna be pretty simple. It's just basically, rather than me sitting here explaining all the API and how it works, um, you basically have a weather object that gets returned from the open map weather. And it has, for example, like temperature, uh, wind, uh, detail status, sunrise, sunset, rain, and the reference time. Uh, and we're just ripping all that information out of this weather object. So basically, whenever we call get weather at place, returns us a weather object, we rip the information out, we add location on, return that. And similarly for forecast, we get the forecast at the location, rip that information out, and send that back. And that is pretty much all we need to do on that script, I believe. Delete that, put a little space there. That's all formatted nicely, so we can now close that. He says too confidently maybe, so we can say eve.weather. So what I'm gonna do here actually is just print uh, out the result just to make sure that is all syntactically correct. Uh, at current, where have I misspelled location? Location, so let's try that again. So there we go, you can see uh, we've 
got, we've called the current uh, function on the service, which is this function here. That's returned us a result. We've now printed out that result and it looks like this. So all I'm gonna do here with this result is rather than sitting here copying and um, telling you how to do it, I'm just gonna copy some code in that I did earlier, which basically just echoes out um, the information from result. So from result, we first echo out the location and status. Uh, we send to that, then we echo out temperature, wind, rain, and we also echo out sunrise and sun time. We don't have the time um, module, so let's import that. I want to import time. And you can see that's gone to the top there. So now when I do this, you can see, oh, and when you can, I do this, you can see it says London GB, clear skies, temperature is between this and this. These are emojis, uh, they work on a Mac, not Windows yet. Not really that interested in fixing that at the minute. Maybe we can fix that later. Um, but you can see it now prints it out very nice and neat. I'm gonna come down here and basically do uh, the same thing for forecast. Um, so yeah, because, so when we call the forecast endpoint, we actually get a list of dictionaries back. So what I want, which is like separated by three hour intervals. So what I basically wanna find is the time in the around about the middle of the day where we can get that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is rather than actually do this, I'm gonna say, right, to display. So for each weather object uh, we get back from this, is, the, is it around midday? And all we do, um, so we can create the function is around midday. And all is midday does is basically takes an epoch time and converts it to um, convert mod converts a time to epoch, which we can use with this function here. Uh, so is it around epoch? Takes an epoch time string, converts it to an actual epoch, and checks if it's greater than 11 a.m. and less than one. Uh, and then that's my classification around midday. We don't want these sitting in the middle of the class, so let's stick them at the top to get them out of the way. Sorry, not even in the class. They just get them out of the top of the script because get them out of the way. Um, so we now have this is around midday function. And then again, we're just gonna kind of nicely format stuff. So to display, uh, get the location, uh, format epoch time, because epoch time comes in a weird time. So I'm just gonna create a little function in here called uh, formatter uh, that formats those epoch times. And again, prints out the forecast. Oh, so I just tried to run that there and it says what, missing one potential argument, which is interval. Um, and we are just gonna pass interval in. And it will default to three hours. I just noticed once we run the eve weather forecast command, you'll get an error that says this invalid format for string, uh, which if you go into line 55 and look at this, um, this minus shouldn't be there. Um, and then when you run again, you can see it nicely formats the dates um, there for you and will display the temperature, wind and rain. And there we go, that is pretty much it. So now you've got the kind of the separation of logic and you can start typing uh, eve, it will give you a list of commands. You can see we've got the weather command. If I go eve uh, weather, you know, it gives me the list of, uh, we can add like little help texts here, which is quite good. So we can say like uh, current is um, find, current weather info and forecast. If we had doc strings, we can say find forecast weather info. And then if I run that again, you can see it says, uh, comes up there, which is quite nice. Um, so I can say eve weather current prints out uh, current information and eve weather forecast also prints out forecasted information. And for example, you can add the L uh, command to say something like, uh, what do you want to say? New York, New York, uh, New York, and that will give us the New York weather info at the minute. Um, yeah, quite simple, kind of our first little project. Uh, quite nice, quite sweet, quite good. Uh, ignore the emojis, we'll fix them another time. Cool, there we go. So we've now got a CLI tool that prints out the current and forecasted weather on request for any location. All the code will be on a GitHub so you can go through it all at your own pace and understand it. Um, so the, yeah, the reason why this one was kind of so long was because we had to kind of structure the app and things like this. Um, 
So as I roll out more and more videos now, it will be very quick and easy to kind of just roll out more features and use more APIs um, and expand that command and services directories in order to, to extend functionality. So in the upcoming videos, I'll be adding more and more um, features to the EVE CLI. Please leave a comment below if you have any ideas that you want included. Uh, if they're really good, I will make a video about them and I will include them into the EVE CLI. I'm open to kind of open source contributions. So if you feel like you want to add a command into it, uh, jump into the GitHub, make a branch, send me a request and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll merge it. Subscribe, like, all the good stuff. It helps me out and helps this video go up the rankings and get more people interested in Python and seeing this kind of code. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day, everybody. Thank you.